Kohli goes down the ground. Kohli goes out of the ground. Talk me through that. The three or four pieces of commentary that I'm proudest of. This is definitely one of those, and without doubt, the most difficult commentary stint that I've ever done in my life. Because here is a game that's almost gone. It's an India-Pakistan game. The emotion behind an India-Pakistan game, nobody is watching it rationally. I remember Peter Drury telling me, "We have to remain rational." in spite of the fact that the audience is always irrational hmm. so how do you stay rational when you know everybody is watching it irrationally the same commentary clip is going out to india it's going out to pakistan it's going out all over the world everybody this is the most watched clip and the game is almost gone and it starts to turn around yeah and you've got to be in that moment but when kohli plays that shot I say Kohli goes down the ground because I have no idea that ball's gone going for six, because that shot does not go for six. It's very very rare that a player has the skill to play that shot for a six. So I don't know it's going for a six. If he plays this one, which he does on eighteen point six, you can see as soon as it hit the bat that it's probably going for six. Eighteen point five. Anybody tells you they knew that it's going for a six, they're either high on something or they're lying. So that is why the first line is Kohli goes down the ground, and then suddenly there's amazement in my own voice. I said that went out of the ground. So hence goes Kohli goes out out of the ground. But I was just reacting to the situation. Then there's a second six, and the game is not over yet. So I cannot, for example, say, "Yeah, man, Kohli, you're the dude. You're the biggest. You're the superstar. You're smashing them, man." Which a major part of my audience wants me to say, "Yes," but I cannot because I will look incredibly stupid if then he gets out in the next over in India, lose that game by four runs. So I I have to stay in the moment. My audience expects me to do something which I cannot do. Now remember, my responsibility as a world feed broadcaster is this game is being watched in Pakistan too. Now, if I say, "Yeah, man, Kohli, you're the greatest. You did this," what about those guys? Would you like it if a Pakistani commentator hit uh, responded to say Babar hitting Bumrah for six and saying, "Hey, Bumrah, what are you, man? This is Babar. We won't like it." So I've got to keep that in mind. Then you come to the commentary that I actually enjoyed a little bit more, which was, "What are you doing, Nawaz?" Yes, when the ball this is the leg stump, incredible presence of mind from Ravi Chandran Ashwin, who leaves a ball at that stage, <laughs> who leaves a ball? Can you imagine the extraordinary composure in his mind? If he leaves the ball and it nicks the pad, you're looking like the biggest, the most stupid person on the planet. Then when the match is over, there was I had only thought of one line. I said, if India win and Kohli takes us through, this is the line that might make sense, but I cannot keep thinking of the line because then I'm going ahead of myself. So the line I had in my mind was, these are the kind of innings, Virat, that take you from the present into legend. I say it after the game is over. I cannot say it while the game is on. Can you mind? I'm saying this is the kind of innings, Virat, that makes you a legend. Boom! Next ball, top edge out, and he's like, "Hey, I can't lie." So that gets lost in the clip. Now you ask me about commentary, be doing commentary for clips. In the clip, you get certain, you get a bit of commentary. When the game ends, you get that. When Kohli is walking back, I said, "These are the kind of innings, Virat, that take you from the present into the legend." That doesn't make the clip, but that is the line that I was most satisfied. You've also gotten trolled for that. More than I've ever been in my life, because one of the one of the realities of life is that there are troll armies these days. And if people don't like you, you could be Arlet, you could be the greatest broadcaster the game has ever seen. But if people don't like you, they will find ways of saying that is that is bad. We're seeing at the moment on social media. If you say "Wow, Rohit," there's an army of people who say nasty things about Rohit Sharma. To some extent, if you say "Wow, Virat," there's an army of people. Going after Virat, and this is extremely unhealthy. Not just for cricket, but it's very unhealthy for society. Can you imagine what a terrible, terrible way to live life? That is purposeless, sad, angry. We only live once, and yet there's so many people who want to do that. I feel sorry for them. The four that has been hit, your line cannot be longer than the video yeah. that will go on clips. So how do you adjust your lines to those? Your line has to be short enough when you are calling it. When you're doing it on radio, 
your line can be beautifully evocative you can take a minute to go into it because it's not linked to a certain picture on tv it has to be and you know it reminded me of there was there was a lit fest i went to many years ago and gulzar saab was going to be on it and swanand kirkere whom i who i'd got to know was also on it and i was interested to see a very talented young lyric, younger lyricist chatting with one of the legends and gulzar started talking about his great song from bandini hmm. mora gora rang le le mohe sham rang de de and swanand then said gulzar saab aap bura na mane lekin hamari line jo hai wo na ringtone mein aa sakti hai ye dekhte hain hum ki main ek line likhun jo ringtone mein jaye to main aaj moha gora rang de de main nahi likh sakta aaj us situation mein ye farq pada hai ab hum likh rahe hain aur usme and i i suddenly thought that's exactly what we are we are doing with our clips you listen to the, all the great commentators of the past and there these great power of words and whatever but i'm saying i've got six i've got six words i've got maybe eight words and i've got to be in that moment in those eight words so that that's how that's how things are changing how has harsha bhogle's commentary according to you evolved it is inevitable that it will evolve typically it has to do with growing confidence the growing confidence will reflect in the manner you speak the manner you pause a lot of people of my generation were told that people from england or australia are better than you hmm and so you wanted to be like them and so you'll find that everybody of my generation or slightly before would have had a little accent that was that you thought was a smart accent to have in course of time you realize i'm i'm fine as i am you know and so you'll find in my work that the accent changes as you go along the speed changes because when you're not confident you speak very fast, fast. it's like a, ba- a batter who's afraid of the ball of the fast bowler plays too many shots because he's not sure of his defense the pauses arrive as you get older your voice deepens a little bit it'll happen to you as well as you get older the voice deepens so then you can play your voice a little bit more so that that happens when you start to own the pause as the great richie beno said you do that but commentary is very different from hosting hmm. for a long time i was a host who did commentary and the challenges of a host are vastly 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 different from the challenges of a commentator you say that you know you uh, were basking in the reflected glory of people like sachin tendulkar rahul dravid saurav ganguly the big five as they call the them greatest the greatest broadcasting time of my life broadcasting time of your life now you will have a rohit retiring you will have a virat retiring you will have a dhoni retiring from the ipl how will your perspective for that change versus the perspective of sachin because there is yeah that difference right how will you call that versus this the relationship will be different the individual relationship will be different for example i had been to sachin son's first birthday hmm. i've been to sachin's wedding i've gone to hyderabad to vivias lakshman's wedding i've been at a restaurant where anil kumble paid the bill you always remember these things who pays the bill i've been at a restaurant lovely lovely dignified man so there are these relationships that you've built and a trust that they had in you that some things will never come out there was no clickbait there was no desire to be the story that will be everywhere so trust remained with the younger players i don't have the same relationship because i cannot have they yeah they were not born when i start so it it's very different i found myself once in a presentation saying our bete and my producer said kya kaat tum kaan mein aapne bete bola and i can't respond to him i said afterwards he's younger than my son I said mai kya kahunga yaar ji aaiye but that happens without you realizing how how better or you put an arm around them. yeah so you've got to be careful not to talk down to them but the emotion is is very different when these are much younger players and i just love watching you know the tide always comes in mangalam the one thing you see from the elements is the tide always comes in comes in so tendulkar was there the tide came in virat kohli came in ms dhoni came in the tide went out as it always does it will for all of us too that tendulkar went out rahul dravid went out rohit sharma came in virat kohli went in that tide will go out shubman gill is in remember we are still talking batters see how conditioned we are anil kumble came in ravichandran ashwin came in jadeja came in slowly that tide will go out too and even in your profession as you get older you must be acutely aware that one day the tide will take you out as well so how do you then stay relevant the biggest challenge is to stay relevant and 
it happened to me once. I was doing some work in a studio in Sony. And when I grew up, music was a big Hindi film. Music was a big part of our lives. So I was surrounded by people. As soon as a song began, we would say, Ye Madan Mohan ka hai. Ye SD Burman ka hai. Ye OP Nayar ka hai. So we could recognize as you went along. So that was the upbringing. And someone played a cover drive. I don't remember who it was. And I said, wow, aisa laga jaise manna de ne sahi sur pakda. And I looked around. People have no, no idea, idea of Manna Day, which is sad in itself. That told me two things. It told me better stay relevant. This is a different era. And two, it said if people don't remember a Manna Day or Rafi, oh, what I? are you, man? So one day people are going to forget you as well. <laughs> But you have to stay relevant in your metaphors. You've got to stay relevant with changing tastes and preferences. So for example, I just did a blog where I said, I wish younger players were not given that much money in their hands. Hmm. But maybe part of the money was kept aside for when they retire. So it's there. They've not burnt it all out. And they're not getting, they won't get spoiled by money. It's such a my generation thought. And it's a clip I'm going to put out on my YouTube channel, actually. Let people have a laugh at it. But people will say, so what? This is the moment, right? Enjoy the money. So you've got to be aware and, and, and you've, you've got to stay relevant. And I think that's also part of the reason why I stopped anchoring too. Because uh, I think it's time for, for younger people to do anchoring. If senior people don't move out, how will younger people get breaks? But that was far more difficult than, uh, than commentary. I mean, I remember a day India playing Pakistan at Adelaide, hmm. 2015. It's a two-hour pre-show. It's hot. At the end of one hour, the, uh, the crowd starts to come in, but the music starts. And the giant speakers are next to you. For the next one hour, I have not heard a word of what the two panelists next to me are saying. So then you keep jamming your earpiece in. Then when no one's watching, you quickly turn the volume up behind you. You've got to know your equipment. Yes. Inside or you've got to know your equipment. So while trying to turn up the volume, you cannot switch the channel. Yeah. Behind you. So you've got to turn the volume up, turn that, hoping you can hear something you still can't. Then the understanding with the producer is, if I can't hear you, You follow me. Most times I will follow you. But if I'm not following you, it means I can't hear you. That's assuming the connection's on. The What connection, if the connection's yeah, yeah. not on? Mo these days, most times the connections are on. But there were days when the, when the connections were off. But you've got to, you know, it happens to you. Yeah. When you've been an anchor for a while, that your instinct becomes very sharp for what to say and what not to say. And if engineering fails, sometimes you don't mind it. Because if everything is going smoothly, what's the difference between you as yeah. an anchor and somebody else? It's when you have a difficult exam that you look better right, so than the, the other yeah. person. The batter comes out well on if a it's a difficult pitch. pitch. 40 on yeah. a bad pitch gives far more satisfaction than 95 on a good pitch. So I'll just end with this one little story. We are in England. It's the World Cup. English producers require you to do a full rehearsal. In India, I had hardly ever in all these years done a rehearsal. So we've done this rehearsal where I'm doing a walkie and I'm setting the scene and I'm walking, ding, 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 ding. I walk, <laughs> I turn around, there is the spider cam there. The spider cam starts its move. It goes right over my head and goes boom. Mark Nicholas is doing the toss. Got and it. it's a beautiful fluid move. I love spider cams. They give you such beautiful fluid movements on a live telecast. And it's over. I'm about to start my move and my ear goes blank. And I've realized in, by instinct, audio is dead. And so I will not be able to hear my director for that much longer. Luckily, I counted the steps to when I had to go left because you can't make a mark. If you make a mark, you're looking down. When you yeah. look down, you've lost contact with the camera. So I knew I had to walk 12 steps and get my line done in 12 steps, turn around, spider cam, the spider cam starts to move. When the spider cam crosses my head is when I start my throw to Mark Nicholas. So luckily we had done a rehearsal and I couldn't hear the audio at all, but I knew, okay, 12 steps. So in my mind, I'm not thinking line, I'm thinking 12 steps. 12 steps, stop, turn, right. Spider cam is there. Now the spider cam should start moving. Yes, the spider cam started moving. Okay, now I can start thinking, whatever. Now it's come to my head level. It's time to go across to the center, but you always give a little more time should something go wrong. So. In the rehearsal, I said, it's time to go to the center. Mark Nicholas is with the two captains. I said, but there's no audio. What if something goes wrong? So you add on four or five more words just to give the producer that little bit of flexibility. And then you go there. 
So with instinct you get these days, most times on these days you fail. 